I have the privilege and the honor this morning to uh, come and to recognize our veterans. Uh, it takes, in my opinion, it takes a special person to commit their life to a country. To say, I will give my life for this country because I love it. Even when this country has not shown that same love back to them. Amen. But today we come and for those who have served in peace time as well as in war time, we want to honor you. So we're going to ask all of our veterans that are here today, would you please stand?
joyful shout to God, all the earth. Sing out the honor of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say to God, how awesome are your works. To the greatness of your power, your enemies shall submit themselves to you. All the earth shall worship you and sing praises to you. They shall sing praises to your name. Selah. Come and see the works of God. He is awesome in his doing toward the sons of men. He turned the sea into dry land. They went through the river on foot. There we will rejoice in him. He rules by his power forever. His eyes observe the nations. Do not let the rebellious, rebellious exalt themselves. Oh, bless our God, you people. And make the voice of his praise be heard. Who keeps your soul among the living does not allow our feet to be moved. For you, O oh God, have tested us. You have refined us as silver is refined. You brought us into the excuse me, you brought us into the net. You laid affliction on our backs. You have caused men to ride over our hearts. We went through the land through water, and you brought us out to rich fulfillment. I will go out into your house with burnt offerings, with my lips, which my lips have been uttered, and my mouth has spoken. And when I was in trouble, I will offer you your burnt sacrifices of fat animals. With the sweet aroma of rams, I will offer bulls with goats. Come and bear all you who will fear God, and I will declare what he has done for my soul. I cried to him with my mouth, and he has extolled my, extolled my tongue. If I regret the purity in my heart, the Lord will not hear. But certainly God has heard me. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you, God, again for an opportunity, Lord, to come and worship in this place. Thank you, Lord, for life, health, and strength. Thank you, God, for how you kept us throughout this week, God. For Lord, it's nothing that we've done to deserve it, God. It's your grace and your mercy, God, has kept us. We just give you all the honor and glory and praise today, God. And Lord, we thank you for each and every person, God, that has come out to worship today. Lord, we thank you for them, God, and we pray for those, Lord, that wanted to be here but could not. All those that may be sick and shut in today, God, we lift them up. Those three families, God, we ask God that you lift them up today. Strengthen them, God, for strength is needed. We ask God that you have your way in this service, Lord. We ask God that you forgive us all of our sins, Lord, but about thoughts and word of Granting us clean hearts, Lord, and renewing us the right spirit, God. Lord, as we go forward, Lord, God, we ask God that you continue to guide us, order our steps. We ask God to continue to bless the leadership of this ministry. Continue, God, to bless our pastor and his family. We thank you for him, God. We thank you, God, for all that he leads to this ministry. God, again, God, we just ask you to have your way, God, in this service. Anything, God, is not like you, God, we ask you to move it right now, God. Any distractions, God, that may be on our minds, God, we ask you to move those, Lord. Help us, God, just to be focused on you today, God, and prepare to hear what you have for us today, God. Thank you, God, for the word that will come forward. God, we pray, God, that we, each and every person opens up their heart to receive it. And not only here today, God, we doers of your word and we exit these doors. Again, God, we thank you for all things. Let's be our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Again, we just bless the name of the Lord and thank God for each of you today. Uh, this is a day of great celebration for so many reasons. Amen. We celebrate the goodness of the Lord, and God has given us a chance to see a day that we've never seen before. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. Let us be glad in this day. How are you glad today to just be here? Sacrifice, and uh, we 
just appreciate God allowing Amen. you to be here with us. And some of you, sometimes you get a chance to share with some of these uh, veterans to find out their stories, their life, their accomplishments, and all of the things they went through. Mm -hmm. It'll give you a greater sense of appreciation for what they did for us Amen. and for this entire nation. Thank you again so much. This month is about to, I mean, about midway in the month. And some of you had birthdays, and, for, and, and someone just told me this morning, just sent me a text message, asked me if I would give Regina a shout out. Regina, all right. Regina, you can give me a
sending out the word of the day. Amen. 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 that the things that are most 
most important to us should be central to our point of focus. In instances, primary things become secondary things, and secondary things become primary things. In some instances, significant things become <coughs> insignificant. And insignificant things become significant things. In instances, essentials become non-essentials. And non-essentials become essentials. In instances, important things become unimportant. And unimportant things become <coughs> important. When we fail to keep the main thing, the main thing, our focus and our priorities shift. And this can lead to all sorts of issues. There are situations where marriages fail because couples fail to keep the main thing, the main thing. That's right, that's right. Some businesses because corporations fail to keep the main thing the main thing. Many students perform poorly in school because they fail once again to keep the main thing the main thing. Some people struggle with their financial obligation because they fail to prioritize finances by keeping the main thing the main thing. Sometimes individuals lose their way, suffer loss, and end up in trouble. All because, as I said, they fail to keep the main thing the main thing. People aspiring to achieve goals never achieve their goals because they fail to do what? Keep the main thing the main thing. Even congregations, church families, get knocked off track because we fail to keep the main thing the main thing. In Revelation, the church of Ephesus focused more on works than their relationship with Christ. Amen. Amen. Listen to what Jesus said to them, and I read this a few weeks ago. He says, I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not, and found them lying. And you have persevered and have patience and have labored for my name's sake and not become weary. Verse 4, but nevertheless, I have this against you. You left your first love. The church failed to keep their love relationship with Christ intact. And if I can say this once again, this church failed to keep the main thing the main thing. Jesus' words to the church of Ephesus also are similar to his words to the church of Laodicea in Revelation chapter 3. You go through the seven churches of Asia Minor and you come down to the Laodicean church, then there are many scholars who believe that the Laodicean church characterizes the church age before the coming of Christ. Because when you turn from chapter 3 and you go to chapter 4, you would find the heavens open. That's right. And this is where theologians and many scholars believe that the rapture is to take place. Mm -hmm. But before the rapture, we have to deal with the Laodicean church age, which again some believe to be the last church age before the coming of Christ. On Wednesday night, I started the teaching a series about the Latter-day Message. Or the Latter-day Messages. And if you uh, believe that 
we are living in the latter days or the last days, then this Laodicean church would characterize how the church would be before the coming of Christ. Mm -hmm. This Laodicean church, they focus more on what they had than they focus on Christ. Mm -hmm. This Laodicean church had become inward focus and, and they had a false scale to measure where they were spiritually. Listen to what Jesus said, they said. This Laodicean church, they had become spiritually in parts mm -hmm. to the point that they made the Lord sick. I mean, you, you read through our scriptures, through the gospel, you see Jesus going around healing the sick. But when you get to the last church age, this church age made the Lord sick. Amen. Amen. Now, isn't that a sad commentary? Amen. Sad commentary to know that, that the church that he died for, That's right. he shed his blood to redeem, to make his bride. Yes, right. This church would come to a place that they literally make him sick. Mm -hmm. but, but, but Jesus said it's going to happen. This is the church age and this is what will happen. Can I, can I challenge you, St. Paul, that as you hear this message today, even though he said this would characterize the church age, every church don't have to fit into this characteristic. Amen. Amen. So listen to what Jesus said. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, I know your works, mm -hmm. that you're neither cold nor hot. Right. Mm -hmm. He said to them, he said, I wish you were cold or hot. Make your mind up. <laughs> he said, really, you are in a different church, but I need you to get off the fence. If you're going to be on that side, be on that side. Right. If you're going to be on the other side, be on the other side. But he said, I wish you were cold or hot. He said, so then because you are lukewarm, you're neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Isn't it sad when we consider that we can come to a place at the church age that we really turn the Lord's stomach? And you know one of the baddest feelings that you can have if you've ever been sick is to have an upset stomach. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some of my family members, when they are dealing with stomach discomfort, I might try to tell them to eat this or try this, drink that. They say, oh no, I'm not going to eat that, I'm not going to drink it because I don't want to throw up. Mm -hmm. It is a bad feeling, but look at what Jesus said. Jesus said to this church, he said, I know your work. You're neither cold nor hot. I wish you were cold or hot. He said, but then because you're lukewarm, neither cold or hot, I would vomit you out of my mouth. Then know what the church said. Jesus said, now these are their words. He said, because you say, I am rich and have become wealthy and have need of nothing and do not know that you're wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Mm -hmm. He said this, this church, you think you're all right, but you're not. Right. You're looking at what you have materially, but you fail to see that spiritually you're naked. Amen. He said that you need to, to buy from me gold that's been tried in the fire. Amen. Let me put some real clothes on you. Yeah. Jesus was saying to the Laodicean church, he said that you have left uh, what's important and you have elevated things that are not important. In other words, the essential thing, which is Jesus, mm -hmm. has become non-essential. Mm -hmm. and, and, and what was non-essential has become essential. And I don't know, the Bible didn't go into talking about all the things that the Laodicean church had, but maybe, maybe they had a beautiful building. Just maybe they did. I don't know. Maybe they had plush car. Maybe they had heat and air conditioning. Maybe within this church there were artifacts. Maybe the people dressed very well. Maybe they looked like they were rich and they thought they had everything going on. Jesus said, no, 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 no. You are missing. 
miserable and don't know you miserable. Yeah. Yeah. You're broken, you don't know you're broken. Yeah. He said, you're poor, blind, wretched, and naked. Jesus reminded them that they had left what was really important. Yeah. As we hear this message today, the Lord wants us to consider what should be most important to us. You see, occasionally, we need to be reminded about the importance of keeping our priorities straight. Our priorities are essential to us depending on what we're trying to accomplish. And as Christians, we need to remember that putting God first is our highest priority. Amen. The Bible teaches that nothing or no one else should take the place of the Lord. Amen. Listen to what God said about himself. And I need you to hear, this is what the Lord said, not that somebody else said. And I don't know how many times I, I've read through the book of Exodus, but somehow I missed it. Maybe I was going too fast. Or maybe my mind wasn't just settled and soaking and absorbing things as it should have. But in Exodus 34, 14, hear what the Lord said. He said, you shall worship no other God, for I am the Lord whose name is jealous. Had y'all read that before? Yeah. I mean, I know that God is a jealous God. Which he says. But, but for the first time when I read this, he said, he said his name is jealous. This speaks of God's characteristics. God is saying, now, now, now I, I, I'm not going to take you putting another God before me. I, 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 I won't stand by or stand for you making me play second when I deserve to be first. He, he wanted Israel to know all of the things that I've done for you. And still, some of you were stooped to the place where you slipped into idle tree. He said, my name is jealous. For I am a jealous God. God wanted this church, he wanted his people to understand, I, I need you to keep the thing that are most important first as your priority. And he said that I am God. The writer of Ecclesiastes gives this summary concerning man's duty towards God. And, and, and listen to what this writer said when he summed it up. He said, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. He said, fear God and keep his commandment. For this is the whole duty of man. Nothing is more important to us than pleasing God. Jesus shows his disciples what happens when they make the main thing the main thing. Look what Jesus said in Matthew 6, 31 through 33. He said, therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? He said, but after all these things the Gentiles seek, he said, but your heavenly Father, he knows what you need. Then Jesus said, verse 33, which we know, he says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Amen. What Jesus was telling the disciples is, don't let your focus shift. You start to thinking more about what you feel are essentials, right. and you forget about putting God first. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, your heavenly Father, he knows everything you need. And I'm glad today that God knows everything we need. Amen. Yeah. Do you know that he knows what we need more so than we know ourselves? Amen. Amen. And, and instead of Jesus, Jesus said, instead of coming to a place where you concern yourself, being overly concerned about what you're going to eat, what you're going to wear, some of the essentials of life. Jesus said, all you got to do is keep the main thing the main thing. <laughs> Jesus said, you just keep your relationship with God right. You put God first. And he said, watch God take care of you. Amen. I'm going to say today that God, he will provide. Amen. There, there, there was a song that was created by this choir, you can go all over the world, can't hear nowhere but that St. Paul. Some the 
was saying, Jehovah God, he is my God. Why? Because God, he will provide. Somebody ought to just give God some praise this morning. And when he came to them, 
In the morning, Jesus made himself available. Now, why is this important? It's important because every morning your eyes open up. I want you to understand that Jesus makes himself available. Amen. There, there is not one morning that you get up. There's not one day that our eyes come open when the Lord does not make himself available. Amen. When you open up your eyes this morning, yeah. you know who was right there with you? Yeah. The Lord was yeah. right there. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, he stood by your bedside. Oh, he man. kept watch over you all night long. Yeah. He kept the blood running warm yeah. in your veins. He kept your heart beating on with the wind. When something could have gotten out of place, it got out of order. God kept you all night long. And then when your eyes came open, the Lord was right by your side. That's the first thing that happened. Second thing that we should know is that Jesus invites his disciples to come and to have breakfast with him. Then the disciples, they they accepted Jesus' invitation. Can I tell you today that every morning when we get up, the Lord extends us an invitation to come dine with him. I think that's powerful to know that every day God, he, he sets the table where his eyes come open. And he says, to us, I want you to come and I want you to dine with me. Come and I want to take you somewhere. Go boldly every day to the throne of grace. Amen. And I declare you can receive grace Amen. and obtain some mercy to help you in a time of need. Amen. I thank God for yesterday, grace and mercy. But when I got up this morning, Amen. I'm excited because God has support of me. Amen. Because he knew that when I tried to make it through the day, I need grace. And
attention to Peter. And Jesus affirms Peter, telling Peter, Peter, you're still useful. I know you denied me. He didn't say it in the text, but he said, Peter, I still got some work for you to do. Yeah. And there are some Peters in here today where yeah. you feel like God can't use you because you messed up. And I want you to know that you're in good company today because all of us messed up. Yeah. But then the Lord didn't throw us away. God said, I can still use you. So Jesus affirms Peter. Peter, I still have purpose for you. And then he tells Peter specifically that he's going to die a martyr's death. But then he says, follow me. After Jesus spoke to Peter, Peter turns around and Peter looks at John. And Peter began to question Jesus about John. Peter said, Lord, what about this man? Some translations say that Peter asked the Lord, Lord, what shall this man do? And look at Jesus' sharp response. Jesus said that if I will that he remain till I come. He said, what is that to you, Peter? It's none of your business. Jesus said to Peter, what I told you to do is to follow me. If I can say it like Jesus meant it, Jesus was saying to Peter, he said, Peter, keep the main thing, the main thing. The main thing that Peter was instructed to do was to follow Jesus. But Peter had become so preoccupied, so consumed about John, that Peter neglected to do what the Lord was telling him to do. So Jesus reminds Peter, Peter, you need to focus on what's important. What I have for John to do is none of your business. What I tell John to do, that's for John. But what I told you to do, Peter, is to follow me. You can't allow none except you to get you knocked off track. And there are some folk today who've lost their focus. All because of none
our tents to you. When will we do the work of the church? Get late in the evening, church. The sun is sinking. It's going to It's going to happen. What is it that the Lord has told us to do? Don't let the day close with the work undone. Thank you. 